will learn about U.S. foreign policy. According to the Constitution, the President has two main roles when it comes to foreign policy. The Constitution names the President Commander-in-Chief of the military. This means the President can send troops to any place in the world. The Constitution also names the President Chief of State, which means that he or she represents the United States to other countries. Under this role, the President has the authority to make treaties, which are formal agreements with other nations. The President also appoints ambassadors, the people who represent the United States government in other countries. Other countries also send their own ambassadors to the United States, and the President has the power to recognize or refuse to recognize these officials. The President is the one who creates foreign policies, but he will usually consult with experts, members of the cabinet, or the, or the national security advisor first. For diplomatic issues, he will work with the Secretary of State, and for military activities, he will solicit the advice of the Secretary of Defense. In order to make good, informed decisions about foreign policy, the President needs detailed information about other countries. Such information is often provided by the Central Intelligence Agency. The CIA has two main purposes. One, to gather and evaluate information about other countries and groups of people, and two, to protect secret information about the United States. Sometimes the CIA gathers information through secret operations or spies. But more often, it finds its information from public sources, like government documents or the news media. Congress also has an important role in foreign policy, but it isn't as broad as the president's. According to the Constitution, only Congress has the power to declare war. And the Senate in particular has specific powers in relation to foreign policy. For example, they must approve treaties proposed by the president in order for them to become official. Additionally, they must confirm government officials appointed by the president. The president and Congress share powers when it comes to trade. The president has the power to give a country most favored nation status. This means that the country enjoys reduced tariffs on its imports to the United States. However, if Congress disagrees with the country having most favored nation status, it can overturn the president's decision with a two-thirds vote. Today, the main purpose of U.S. foreign policy is to maintain national security. There are several ways the government works to achieve this, and we're going to look at four of them, including alliances, aid, sanctions, and military action. Alliances are agreements between nations. Nations often form alliances with other countries to help both parties involved. For example, if one country is attacked, the other countries in its alliance will support that country. A good example of this is World War I, when the nations of Europe were divided into alliances. An event in one country triggered those alliances to go into effect. As a result, many European countries quickly became involved in the war. Another example is the formation of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO, after World War II. NATO still exists today and is an alliance between the United States and many countries in Western Europe. Foreign aid is economic support one country gives to another. The United States provides foreign aid to developing countries to help their economies grow and to build stronger relationships. In recent years, most of this foreign aid has gone to countries in Africa and the Middle East. In many developing nations, people have a hard time meeting their needs of adequate food, clean water, shelter, and basic health care. The U.S. helps by providing loans and other financial assistance, as well as direct assistance, like food and medical supplies. On the other hand, the United States uses sanctions to influence the policies of foreign governments by refusing to trade or send economic aid to them. For example, the U.S. refused to trade with Iran for many years because their leaders were trying to create nuclear technology. Lastly, there is military action. Military action is not considered the first tool of foreign policy, but at times, the government decides it's necessary. Military action can be used as a last resort to solve disagreements with other countries or for efforts to maintain peace between other countries. 
All in all, the president influences foreign policy more than Congress and the military. The president, as a single individual, can act quickly and efficiently to respond to foreign events.